how much do you think about your brain? Probably not often enough. Our brains are the control center of all that we think and do, and yet, do we eat the right foods? Do we get the right amount of sleep? Do we pay attention to social media? Andrew Huberman has become famous, particularly for his YouTube channel, Huberman Lab, but also just as a modern neuroscientist who studies brains and what we can do to better improve our brain and thereby better improve our habits and our health and our lifestyle. I was all ears, I was very interested when I saw that there are five books that he most highly recommends. And so in this video, I want to walk through these five books highly recommended by Andrew Huberman and give you just a brief overview of what each of them teach us about our brains and about ourselves. Andrew Huberman says that these five books will change your life. So these are books that are approved by a well-known neuroscientist that can help rewire your brain and transform your habits. I'm sure you're probably familiar with Huberman Lab, his YouTube channel. He teaches at Stanford, and he's uh, probably one of the best known neuroscientists. And according to Blinkist, these are the five books that he most highly recommends. First of all, Dopamine, Dopamine Nation by Anna Lemke. So in our modern life, we have all kinds of things to give us dopamine, and it's not just illegal drugs, right? It's sugar, it's social media. And these dopamine hits have hijacked our brains, leaving us always wanting the next thing. We become addicted to things like social media, right? So um, the author talks about the pleasure pain balance for every high comes an equal low. Your brain seeks that equilibrium. What about taking a 30 day break from social media? or maybe from TikTok or Facebook or whatever is the social media of choice for you, kind of your drug of choice. The author talks about dopamine fasting, scheduled periods of deliberate abstinence to restore your natural motivation, and you'd probably be surprised at how addicted we can actually become. Outlive by Peter Adia is the next one, and the focus is not so much on living longer, I mean, that's part of it, but living better for longer. And he looks at science-backed approaches to pry up prioritize what he calls health span, even over lifespan. Um, the longevity toolkit, strength training, a huge part of maintaining uh, strength on into your later years is strength training, zone two cardio. So even things like walking or just a low steady state of exercise, people that um, in zones that you know live a long time tend to walk a lot and just stay active and metabolic flexibility as well. Uh, the next book, Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker. My 14-year-old uh, son and I are watching a masterclass by Matthew Walker. He's probably the world's best sleep, sleep expert, and he reveals why quality sleep is foundational to most everything we do. I just read an email newsletter today from a friend I went to college with, and he talks about what he calls it, the sleep number. How many hours do you need? For him, it's actually nine and a half right? So immune health, emotional balance, mental performance. During sleep, our brain is doing all kinds of good things. It's dealing with toxic waste that built up during the day. So um, it gives us a memory boost. If you want to do well on a final exam, be sure you get a good night's sleep the night before. Immune power, one night of four hours sleep reduces natural killer cells by 70%. And um, Seven hour sleepers, those who sleep seven hours or more a night, live significantly longer than those who don't. The next book is called Altered Traits um, by Daniel Goleman and Richard Davidson. Beyond the Hype, what decades of neuroscience research reveals about how meditation physically rewires your brain. So it's basically a book on the science of meditation. This is another one of the five books Huberman highly recommends. Attention control, just eight weeks, strengthens our focus and reduces mind wandering. So eight weeks of meditation, emotional regulation, long-term meditators show reduced amygdala reactivity to stress, and then biological aging meditation can even slow cellular aging. So as a Christian, hopefully you're already practicing prayer and meditation, but even the secular world is realizing some significant benefits actually to meditation. So something to 
Be aware of the circadian code by Sachin Panda. Your body runs on a precise 24-hour schedule. Learning to align with your internal clock can transform your energy, your weight, and your mental clarity. So learning what your circadian rhythms are and then trying to align with that. So limit food intake to an 8 to 10 hour window for optimal metabolic health. 10 to 30 minutes of bright light exposure helps set your master clock. So almost first thing in the morning, you want to maybe meditate, pray, drink a lot of water and get outside, get that morning light. Consistent sleep, going to bed and waking at the same times reinforces healthy rhythms. One thing I've been doing lately is trying to go to bed early, even on Friday nights and Saturday nights, not staying up later um, because it's the weekend and avoid blue light two to three hours before bed to protect melatonin production. Now, that is debated. I've heard a lot of things that say you need to avoid blue light and other things that say it doesn't matter that much. I, I try to avoid it for the most part. The Science of Transformation, these five books share a common thread. Understanding your body's natural systems can unlock extraordinary potential for change, right? So um, hopefully you found those to be helpful. And again, Huberman would suggest that you read deeply, focus on understanding core mechanisms rather than just implementing tips. As you read, of course, you might want to take notes. I recently did a video on how to read a book, uh, that famous classic book about that. And then take one you know, thing from one of these books and try to implement it slowly until it becomes automatic. You don't have to try to do everything all at once from all five books. But these books do focus on rigorous science rather than just a quick fix or a passing fad. And uh, they also give a lot of practical tools you can use to try to transform your habits. Uh, which of the five will you read first? Maybe you've already read all five. Maybe you've read at least one of them. So I'd encourage you to share this video with someone who could maybe use it.